Well, good morning, my darlings. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to the UK vlogwise. We arrived back home last night. We got back home at about 11 p.m. and I, for some reason, woke up naturally at quarter past seven. <laughs> We didn't even set an alarm, we just thought we'll let our bodies recover, we'll wake up when we want to, but I guess that is quarter past eight Ibiza time, which is still earlier than we were waking up in Ibiza, so who, who knows? It looks like we have brought the sunshine back home with us, because I'm not gonna lie, looking at everyone's stories while we're away, everyone was posting torrential rain, I think there was flooding in London, which is obviously not great, um, but it's perfect blue skies today, which is superb, because Boy oh boy is that depressing when you come home from holiday and then it is pouring with rain. So the plan for today, I actually need to prioritise doing a little bit of work because where we extended the trip for three days, I have got deadlines today. So I need to do a little bit of filming and that's actually why I haven't given myself my full pamper yet because a couple of things I need to shoot. One of them is a hair before and after for... I've also got a lot of deliveries to open up today. We had quite a few things arrive while we were abroad. Obviously, Lilla took them all in for us and um, she was looking after the dogs slash the house and bought in all the stuff, which was very, very helpful. And we have a lot of gardening to catch up with, which I cannot wait to do. I did go and have a little look around the garden this morning. It has grown a lot where it has been not cold, but wet while we have been away and the garden very much needed a big old drink so um yeah today's vlog is just gonna be like getting back to normal opening up some deliveries um and having a bit of a post holiday pamper when i wash my hair to shoot the philip kingsley things oh i've just realized that that product that i just showed you I will have just cut out a big section of video so you might have just seen a weird cut because i've just realized that the product is not out yet and if you didn't experience a cut and you've just seen it that means i've emailed them and they've said that it's okay to talk about it i always forget i always forget embargoes um but i have just slathered on some by terry balm de rose and i've just had i couldn't resist opening this up a really lovely delivery from elizabeth arden so i actually already have one of these exact things and we took it away with us i if you watch my oh hang on I can't talk any longer because I can just smell this. Mm. I really missed my breakfast of a pan of chocolate while we were away. Yeah, this is a cool bag from a company called Business and Pleasure. It was very kindly sent by Elizabeth Arden. I have got the one which is a couple of years older than this. It's got a different lining. It's so good for taking on holiday with you. You may have seen in the second Ibiza vlog that was up on Tuesday. We took it on the boat trip day because it's really good if you are going to make yourself a little picnic for a beach day or a boat day. Pop your champagne, pop your beers or your boca de Dios in here. Keeps it cool and fresh, but I also transport my liquids in this. So what I usually do is put my liquids in a plastic bag and pop them in this. Obviously it's super lightweight and squishable, so just a very handy thing to take on holiday with you. And Elizabeth Arden sent it with a wine bottle, which <laughs> you're actually balanced on, a cooling wine bottle from a brand called Partner in Wine. And I have a feeling Charlie knows the founder of this company. I might have got that wrong though. But I'm pretty pretty sure Charlie knows, um, I think it's a couple that started that business. Obviously I don't know them, otherwise I'd have told you the story. But it's all to celebrate the Elizabeth Arden Great Eight, um, eight Hour Range. They've sent eight reasons to reach for Great Eight. Um, sorry, the Eight Hour Cream. If you've not used this before, it is a rather iconic product. It's one of those products that you can use for so many different purposes. I'm sure everyone's mum has got one of these in their handbag. It's one of those things that you just use so much and kind of gets passed down generation to generation. If I wasn't shooting this hair thing, I would be popping some on the ends of my hair for split ends. Well, let me read the eight reasons. Number one, use it as an intensive overnight treatment or in-flight mask. Ooh, mix with sugar to create a lip scrub, highlight cheeks and use as a lip gloss, protect the hairline from fake tan lines, amazing. Mix with taupe or light gold eyeshadow and brush it through the brows, <gasps> genius. Ooh, use as a hair serum to smooth down frizzy ends in summer heat, soothe cracked heels and elbows, that's literally all I just did, and tease open tough zips. <laughs> I did not 
know that one. I feel like they've not done the number one, which is... Did they say cuticles? No, but I use it for cuticles and as a lip balm as well. This is one of those epic products that's very healing, very balmy, very comfortable. Mm. And then we also have their SPF 15 Lip Protector, which is again fantastic for taking with you on the beach. I did indeed have one of these in my beach bag. It's essentially same kind of thing, but for the lips. So very hydrating, very recovery focused, and also SPF 15, so that's amazing. Then they have the Targeted Sun Defense Stick. I didn't take one of these with me actually. Um, Lydia did those, so we were using it on any areas that needed a bit of extra protection. So it's one of those really intensive sticks. It's actually great if your husband or boyfriend or you <laughs> get um, particularly like sweaty on the hairline and that can be an area where you can burn. As you can probably see, I still have a little bit of discoloration there where I did burn myself. And I think that's because um, at the beginning of summer, I was obviously wearing my visor as I normally do to do my gardening and I think that rubbed off my SPF and then when I had my schnooze in the afternoon I just burnt my skin which is really blooming stupid because as you might be able to tell from the lack of tan on my face I really don't get my face in the sun because I want to try and avoid any more wrinkles all over miracle oil and this literally is all over. You can use it on your face, you can use it on your body, you can use it in your hair and again it has those amazing benefits from the 8 hour cream. This is actually the first time I've moisturised my skin since the flight so my skin is very very grateful for this delivery. Thank you Elizabeth Arden. I'm just going to pop some on my shins because did you know your shins are the area of the body that have the least um, oil glands, I think that's right, so they always get a little bit more dehydrated. And I love applying things like this in mist form as well, you can kind of like mist it over your back, over your chest, wherever. What else does it say? Massage into the body, smooth through hair. Clinically proven to moisturise for up to 12 hours with Tsubaki oil. A potent blend of moisturising ingredients, this is my little rubbish bag. Okie dokie, then we have got the Intensive Hand Moisturising Treatment. This is amazing. We used to, before it ran out, have one of these in the car because it's one of the only hand creams that's like ultra, ultra hydrating. Um, in fact, Elizabeth Arden, please can you make this with an SPF in it because I think it's one of the Kardashians uses, um, in fact, I think one of the Kardashians drives around with gloves on because when you think about it, obviously your hands are an area of your body that age um, as, as much as your face because they're, they're very visible. When you're driving, your hands are literally like out and up and in full UV. So popping on, so you often find that you need some nice nourishing hand cream after a long drive which is why we have this in the car and also because it's not greasy so you can literally like get back to driving straight away and your hands aren't going to be slipping, slipping off the wheel but I wish that it had SPF in it because I need to have a little bit of sun protection on my hands so that they don't get wrinkly while I'm driving um, but I do have a spray SPF in the car anyway so I try, especially on sunny days, to remember to just mist over the back of my hands before driving. And then, last but not least, all the benefits from the products that I've previously mentioned in a wonderful face mist. This is the best and easiest, quickest way of getting hydration, even if you've done your makeup. Great for heatwave days. Ooh, <laughs> note to self, do not carry on talking while you are misting your face. Um, so it's called the 8 Hour Miracle Hydrating Mist, does what it says on the tin, hydrates your skin. It's a really nice fine mist as well so you don't feel like you're getting squirted in the face, which is brilliant. So that was, sorry I've just had another mouthful of pan chocolat. That was a lovely delivery from Elizabeth Arden, thank you very much. There are some more amazing deliveries downstairs which I will go through with you later on. But for now, I need to stop procrastinating, I need to film the first bits of my um, content that I need to shoot. 
and then hop in the shower and do part two. Holy moly, it is literally the full day later. I have spent the entire day <laughs> shooting this hair content. I hope it's gonna turn out all right. I need to go downstairs and do some editing now. So I have used this amazing new leave-in treatment. I have washed my hair, I have styled it, and I have shot about a million pictures and versions of a reel. What do you guys think to this lighting? It's actually turned a little bit cloudier now, which is a shame, but I have but luckily I had a delivery of this very snazzy, let me show you. Looks rather gnarly. It is a tripod with built-in selfie lights. Now, I'm quite a shiny person, so I have to be quite careful with the lights, but you can um, control it with this dimmer here so you can make it brighter, not sure if you'll be able to see on the screen here, and darker. And I just thought, given the amount of stuff that I do have to shoot on my phone and Instagram story stuff, it could be quite useful. So as you might be able to guess, where is my phone? Excuse all the mess everywhere. I had to clip my case out of it because this holder was not quite big enough. There we go. So yeah, you can clip your phone in. There is a bigger one if you like shooting stuff on iPads. And it's from a company called Vanity X Slick Protect. Comes with a tripod, literally everything here except for obviously my phone came with a kit and it has been very helpful today because otherwise I would have had to have got my ring light out and then like faffed around with my tripod in front of it whereas this is just very very useful. I still obviously have all of my unpacking to do, but first of all, because today is my deadline for this hair project, I am going to whiz that all over to the brand, get my 5pm video live, and then I think it's going to be an evening of unpacking, sorting out laundry, and tidying. Gosh, this is very different to what I have been wearing over the last couple of, so I was like, well, yeah, it is a couple of weeks, because before we went to Ibiza, it was the heat wave. I think I must have burnt my lips on our boat day because my bottom lip in particular is really sore but I've just been doing a little bit of unboxing and I have got a lip mask from Fresh which I'm going to pop on um, but yeah it's gone cloudy outside which oh, it kind of looks blue in the camera but it is cloudy um, yeah and a little bit chilly so I just wanted to be cosy because I'm going to be dashing around the house doing unpacking and washing for the next hour. I've tidied up the absolute bomb site that I created in here for shooting the um, stuff that I needed to shoot today and then I have just popped on. This is a new pair of leggings from Reese and I've got these in black and I've got them in green and they've just released them in this like chocolatey taupey brown colour which I really really like. I'm a big fan of um, brownie style trousers. And then this is the sleeveless knit from Lydia's edit with Karen Millen a couple of couple of edits ago. It's just nice and comfy, but I can still show off my sun-kissed skin. Does anyone else do that when they come back from holiday? Just wear light coloured stuff to try and show off any tan that you may have got on holiday. Um, I have been watching while doing all of my bits and bobs today between filming and a little bits of unpacking that I've done. I have been trying to catch up on Love Island. I think I'm only two and a half episodes in. I think I've got seven to catch up on, I believe. So I'll have one on while I am cooking later. I think we might do an easy peasy mindful chef dinner. Um, and I've also been doing a little bit of mail unpacking. So, some of the bits that arrived. Um, first of all, I had a lovely delivery from Fresh. This product I actually discovered when I went to Morocco with Fresh a couple of summer, summers ago. Their deep hydration sleeping mask, and it is a favourite for both Charlie and I. So, I think we'll probably both use this tonight. It's like a double yin and yang um, face mask. So, one side is more of a gel, and the other side is a cream. And it is so pampering and so hydrating, so I'm going to use that later. Something new has arrived from Living Proof Skull care of vitalizing treatment for thicker fuller looking hair from the root scalp treatment that sounds very interesting indeed and then this lovely little delivery or well not so little actually from um clarins so downstairs i haven't actually opened it yet we have got a print from jessica yolanda k um so this is an authenticity certificate i need to go and open that up but i didn't bring it upstairs i need to go and grab that Ooh, and it looks like they've partnered with her for a little guide to, a calming guide to simple line drawing portraits. How lovely. Okay, here we go. So this is a new Clarins collection. Calm Essential skincare formulated with essential ingredients for sensitive and weakened skins. So we've got a redness correction gel. Ooh. 
Oh, that sounds good. Restoring treatment oil with clary sage extract. That sounds heavenly. Some information about the line drawings. How gorgeous. And I'm also loving this pink color, the branding. So I'm guessing this is the oil. Just prop you up on that little box while I undo this. I always do wonder, however, if this little bit of plastic, is this necessary? Because I heard somewhere, probably good old David Attenborough, that the crinklier the plastic, and that's very crinkly, the um, harder it is to decompose. Ooh, so this is the Clary Sage Oil. Oh my gosh. Oh, that smells heavenly. Not, it's not a strong smell at all. In fact, it's very light. It's a very light oil. Ooh, that is lovely. I am going to enjoy putting that on in the evenings. And then we have also got soothing emulsion oh, sorry i need to sit where you can actually see me this range i guess is really good for those that have got ultra sensitive skin and actually after all the sun exposure my skin is pretty sensitive at the moment see that is gorgeously lightweight as well i feel like these are products that you know are not going to upset your skin and your skin's just going to take in the ingredients that it needs but i'm not sure at what point in your skincare your routine you're meant to use this so that's the soothing emulsion maybe literally when you like come home from work you take your makeup off from the day and then apply these soothing products i think that could be a really good shout and then the other one is a redness corrective gel this could be really good for me for my cheeks because i do get a little bit red and my other lovely selection of pr items that i unboxed um today are here so first of all let me tell you okay this is very exciting as you may know my obsession is of course the by terry hyaluronic hydra powder i talk about it all the time you guys know how much i love it well they have just released a palette version there are two different versions of this that is um what's this one called medium to warm and fair to medium so you get i mean they're all basically quite neutral so they are not too colored when you pop them on so even if these aren't exactly perfect for your skin tone they're still going to do the trick it's the powder that people that hate powders absolutely love it never cakes you up i mean you know you guys know i talk about that by terry hyaluronic hydro powder all the time but that's a really nice way of perhaps using different shades for different areas of your face. I might use this one um, on my chin where I might want a little bit more coverage. This one seems to be a bit brighter, so I could use it under my eyes. This one on my T-zone, perhaps on my cheeks. And I love that it has a mirror in the lid. So great for applying on the go. They have also so very kindly sent me a top of my favorites, the Hyaluronic Hydra Balms. Um, not sure if my Buy Terry 20% off discount code is still live. If it is, it'll be on the screen here. If not, I'm very sorry. Hopefully I'll have another one soon. These really are absolute game changers. If you just want your lips, there we go, to be comfortable, you wanna get the benefit of hyaluronic, so gorgeously hydrating, but you want a beautiful color on your lips. I rate these so, so highly. The shades one, two, three, and four are my favorites. From like pinky pinks to nudie pinks to brownie pinks. I just love them. The formula is so fantastic. Um, a delivery from Jizu. This sounds gorgeous. I do love a leave-in conditioner. And this is the honey infused leave-in conditioner. I've actually just run out of my one from Purology. So I'm going to take that down to the bathroom and... Um, use that and i'll report back and then a top up of some of my favorites from fresh including the soy face cleanser this is perfect so i took this with me to ibiza i had um the same size but i actually finished it while we were out there because charlie and i obviously shared it and they have sent a trio of lip products which is perfect because as i said i'm not sure if i've burnt my lips or if i've maybe like bitten them or something in fact i have a feeling i might have bitten them while i was kissing the dogs last night i think i was doing a goofy face and then one of them jumped up on me but either way my lips are sensitive so this is a bit of a three-step routine they've sent their sugar lip polish which is great for exfoliating their lip serum which i have used before and i think they've repackaged this um because i'm pretty sure it used to be a pipette whereas now it's a pump so i'm going to take that down for my bedside table it's a really great thing to put on your lips after you've brushed your teeth and before bed. And then speaking of something to pop on your lips before bed, this is something completely new from Fresh. This is their Recovery Lip Mask. 
and I've just popped some of this on um, and it is ultra thick had to use my nail to scratch it out a little bit but yeah it just feels like it's completely embalmed my lips in nourishingness let's see what it says a leave-in treatment clinically proven to repair their appearance for a smooth and plump look sounds amazing so yeah I've got it on now I will um report back again in the morning this is probably going to be a two-day vlog because I've not really done anything exciting for you today you can't really tell that I've got it on my lips I did have lipstick on earlier but I've just plastered it on top but I will take take I will take my full uh, fresh lip treatment downstairs and have a little bit of a pamper before bed and then pop on the night mask as well. So now I'm going to go downstairs, sort out another load of washing, how exciting, um, and then get some dinner ready. Hello my darlings, it is now the next day but it's about 5pm in the evening. Today has been a nice day because the sun has been shining, it has been 20 two degrees today which it has been really really lovely obviously not Ibiza temperatures but really really nice so I have been out doing a little bit of gardening <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> I've just had a Ribena I have been doing a little bit of gardening I have had a lot of work to catch up on yesterday as I think I said a few times was literally just kind of catching up on content deadlines um so shooting stuff and sending over to brands. So today was like tackle tackling the inbox, but also going outside, doing a few bits and bobs, and also majorly catching up on Love Island. I'm still watching it right now. I'm just at the part where Millie and Lily have just had their meeting, which is, woo. Obviously I'm team Millie, but yeah, I, I don't know what she's gonna do, but, <clears throat> Half of me is like, he wasn't your boyfriend yet, and he's obviously quite sorry. But the other half of me is like, no, he lied to you when he got back into the villa. And <clears throat> if you let him treat you like that now, what was it going to be like later down the line? So let me know your thoughts, or maybe the situation's completely changed by the time this vlog goes up. So, yes. Anyway, I'm wearing this really kind of teenagery little... <laughs> bralette top I think it's from Gilly Hicks um, and my and I've been wearing shorts all day in the garden but I have just got changed in some leggings because it has cooled down and I thought I would take you outside and give you a bit of a garden update because a lot of stuff has grown some things have finished like the broad well I'll just show you let's just go outside they're having their chat after the Millie and Lily convo oh I would not like to be in Liam's shoes right now hey little boys <laughs> Oh my gosh, so the first thing that I really noticed out here, the wildflower, gosh, not wildflower, it looks like a wildflower, the border has gone absolutely crazy. While we were away, there was a lot of rain, so everything is very happy. Charlie was, not concerned, that's not the right word, but he was thinking that my cosmos were going to be just little small ones. Well, this rain has very much proved him wrong because some of them are definitely more than a metre high. I need to do some deadheading. I didn't quite get around to that yet today. But the salvia is looking good. Lots of bumblebees doing their thing. And when you consider that this border is probably six months old, I just think it is so voluminous. It looks like it's been here for five years or so, I would say. This is a really lovely thing to put by your door. It's called night flocks, or maybe it's just normal flocks, um, but it's got a really beautiful scent to it at this time of the day. Some of the purple lupin is starting to go over, but the pink lupin, which I actually grew from seed, is doing very well indeed. Yeah, I definitely need to come down after dinner and do a little bit more deadheading because that should make them grow back a little bit better gosh this cosmo plant over here is the one that i um was mostly picking from when i was making floral bouquets and with cosmos the more you pick the more they grow back so this one is definitely doing very well again i need to do a little bit more deadheading but you can see there's loads of buds that haven't even opened yet so this is just going to keep on getting better and better okay let's check in the greenhouse i probably should have done some watering in here today Think I'd better come back with the hose pipe. I'm a bit surprised that this tomato plant didn't grow more tomatoes. We've got a few little babies down here but I thought it would kind of, kind of sprout up a little bit more um, but not to worry because my yellow pear tomatoes are all starting to come through slowly but surely. We're gonna have a lot of yellow pear tomatoes. What's going on over here? I still don't know what this is. Still not really doing anything. Ooh. 
we have a couple new cucumbers growing. That's good news because I wasn't sure oh, we're going to have three. I wasn't sure after I picked the first one if we would get any more. Aubergine's looking a little bit wonky, but never mind. And then we've got one of the chilies has turned red and then lots of green ones up there. Oh, how funny. I thought this was completely broken. <laughs> I planted these seeds on the 20th of February, Rudbeckia, and we have one tiny little flower. That has been very disappointing and very slow. So I don't think I'll do that again next year. Wow, I can see already my courgette leaves are looking absolutely ginormous. My broad beans are definitely over. Luckily I harvested so so many before we came away and the wind and the weight of the rain has just completely squashed them. So I think that's going to be a job for me first thing tomorrow. I will definitely definitely grow broad beans again next year because they were such productive plants but I probably will only do half the amount. I definitely didn't need a batch here and a batch there but I think every single one actually, um, every single seed sprouted, germinated so they, so they were very successful. My spinach is massive again, it just loves being here and the little red leaf, um, Dickens! Dicky! Red leaf lettuce is doing well again as well. It looks also Wow, we have got some proper curly kale leaves going on underneath my cloche. I have to keep the lid on because where it's a brassica, it does get eaten by pigeons and things. So I might pick some of those leaves for dinner. More curly kale leaves doing quite well under here, nicely protected from pigeons and butterflies. And then we've got another one down there. Sorry about Dickens in the background. Spinach here taking over, definitely only need to put half the amount of spinach in next year. And do we have any broccoli? I think my broccoli, this area is just hugely overgrown, just gets eaten as soon as it flowers unfortunately. Again, all my purple sprouting broccoli germinated so I had tons of this. But yeah, I think tragically it's just getting eaten alive down here. So the next thing that I'm going to be able to harvest, as well as my courgettes, are my French runner beans. Now, again with these, I don't actually know when you're meant to harvest some. This one looks pretty good, so I think these are the ones that you slice at lengthways. I'll take that into the kitchen and have a look, but we've got quite a few. That one seems to have something quite voluminous in there. Let's take that one as well. This is the great thing about, and why you should also plan your vegetable garden, because then when one thing goes over, like your broad beans, you have something else to take their place, so you always have some nice fresh produce. And I think similarly to the broad beans, we're gonna get quite a lot out of this runner bean um, plant. It has completely taken over this obelisk, which used to be a sweet pea climber, but the runner beans have taken over in their quest for height. Now I did say to Lala and our gardener to please harvest any courgettes they saw while we were away. So I'm not expecting to find any in here, although we have got some flowers that I could probably harvest. I find that my courgettes really prickle me. They have little spiky leaves, but also I don't know if you can see little spikes on their stems. So I'm just gonna use the broad, the runner beans to push them out of the way. Yeah, I think these have all been eaten, which is absolutely fine, because when they get too big, they get a little bit, um... Ooh, this could actually be a pumpkin, you know? Hmm, I'm not sure how to tell the difference, but this curly little wire here makes me think it could be a pumpkin. I definitely need to prune back my sweet peas tomorrow as well. They have gone very wild. We've got lots of actual little peas, which apparently are poisonous, so I need to just do a little bit more flower collecting. Oh my gosh, down here is out of control. You can barely even see my little balls anymore. We've got some, gosh, I think that's actually a dahlia. Or is that a cosmos? I'm not sure. Reaching for the sun. Oh, that's pretty. This was actually a sheet of um, seeded paper that I planted and it's got some lovely little poppies coming onto the pathway. Some pretty roses here, still doing well. This is the Emily Bronte um, David Austin rose and then lots of little cosmos over there, bringing some colour and then, oh my gosh, a giant cosmos bush over there doing very, very well. Definitely needs picking. What are you doing in the tray, little boy? Yeah, funny munchkin. Right, a giant courgette plant. Ooh la la. See, they look like they're courgettes, but actually they are just the like tubers to the leaves. I think all the courgettes 
have been eaten, but it looks like we've got some of the trombone style ones coming through. Wow, this plant is actually gonna block the passageway. Maybe you shouldn't put courgettes in raised beds. Oh dear, that trombone one has started to get a bit rotten. How do you stop that happening while they're still growing? That's what I'd like to know. Now I don't normally show you the herb bed because I have to say I find it rather boring and it is very much Charlie's domain, but I think this is... I'm pretty sure this is dill, which is flowering, but I don't think it's a problem when dill flowers. Rosemary and sage and thyme all doing well, sage leaves taking over. In fact, they've almost taken over the coriander, the curly leaf. Is that coriander or curly leaf parsley? I think that's coriander. We have got some growing in there, but before long it is going to get taken over by the sage leaves. So again, I'll snip that back tomorrow. Honestly, I am blown away <laughs> with how huge these courgette leaves are. If anything, I think they're probably too big. They're surely creating too much shade for the plant. And I feel like there should be more fruit coming through by now. I can't... Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, there's a few coming through. But I wonder if I can hack some of these back to give more light. Please share any words of wisdom. Any courgette growers that may be watching. And what about down here? I wonder if we have any strawberries. I'm pretty sure they all will have been eaten by little doggies or little squirrels. Yeah, I can't actually see any fruit in there. Again, we did have a lot more when it was a slightly younger plant. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe after things fruit, they just get super leafy. But yeah, lots and lots of French runner beans in here. It's completely taken over this... Uh, archway so wow as you can see it's just pretty overwhelming down in the garden at the moment everything has just grown literally out of control and i think this is this goes to show how much of a continual task gardening is because yeah it's really fun in spring <laughs> really fun in spring and late winter when you're planting all your seeds really satisfying getting your first fruit but this time of year, yes, there is lots still in abundance, but it does get overwhelming because even, like, I have been pottering around the garden today. I was mostly tidying bits around the front of the house. I didn't even show you that yet. Um, but yeah, as you can see down there, it's just wild. It's overgrown. I need to spend another entire day down there getting it back to, back to looking good. So I can see why people have full teams of gardens in houses with gardens of this size. But, Sorry, we love doing it, but it's overwhelming just to keep it real with you. But let me quickly go around <laughs> the front of the house. But I'm going to pop the kettle on because I think we're going to do a nice pasta dish for dinner. We actually turned the agar off while we were away, but we found that we just needed it so much. Like the other day, putting my almond, not almond, uh, my pan chocla in the agar, it was turned off. So I had to use the normal oven. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And it's just a pain having to wait for it to warm up. I think you get used to having an agar very quickly. Um, and we just don't find the induction hob to be that effective, which is a real shame. But never mind. Anyway, that'll take five minutes to boil. So in that time, I'm going to show you the front garden. A little update here. The jasmine that's growing up the side of the house is starting to flower. So this is going to look absolutely beautiful in about a week's time. I think it's flowers in late spring and midsummer, which is rather beautiful. What else, Chicken Lynn? Come on, you show us. <laughs> so something that was a really nice surprise to come home to, and I noticed it at midnight when the taxi pulled up, was that the roses on the archway are flowering really, really well, which is quite surprising because this is actually a north facing wall, which means it doesn't get much sunshine, so it's quite hard to get things to flower here. But these are just looking so lovely and it has definitely doubled in height. Still got lots of lovely little buds to come through. If you ever see a dead head on a rose, you should always oops, carefully take it away so the energy can be spent on the other blooms and because they look ugly. So that's going to be gorgeous. Imagine, check back in on me in about five years time. Well, maybe not even five, maybe three and hopefully it'll take over the entire arch. How gorgeous will that look? 
this side is a little bit more shady. We have got some buds here, but it's always going to be a little bit behind. So probably in two years, this one will be up to there and this one will still only be a third of the way up, but that's nature. Don't know if you remember in one of the vlogs before we went to Ibiza, I walked around Adderbury where Straw Top Cottage is with you guys and I honestly think they should rename Adderbury Hydrangea Town <laughs> because Hydrangea Annabelles, like the ones we've got here, just do so well. The whole village is just covered in them and they're looking a lot healthier than ours. Some of mine here, this one doesn't look happy at all. I might even deadhead that one, I'm not sure if you're meant to, but then some of them are looking really, really good. This one here is looking very plump and pom-pom-like. In fact, if I still got it, I'm gonna pop a picture on the screen here of one of the houses in Adderbury that just has the most amazing, humongous versions of these pom-poms um, outside the front. Dicky. We've also got these really lovely metal items, which we normally keep on the lawn, but they add a nice little bit of structure. And this one is being very useful at propping up the hydrangea. Dicky. And then on this wall back here, this is a climbing hydrangea and that is just loving being there. That's going to be exceptional when that flowers. Sorry, I had to cut that a little bit short because Dexy found a baby pigeon. I'm not sure if it's been separated from its mummy or what's happened, but also not sure if we should move it because what if mummy does know the baby pigeon is there? Not too sure. I'm <laughs> going to check with Charlie what he thinks is the best thing to do in that situation. And yeah, Dexter was showing an interest in the baby pigeon, so scooted him back inside. So I'm going to make some dinner, and then I'm going to show you a few more little bits and bobs that arrived over the last few days. And also, I've got a little bit of flower admin I need to do. These arrived today from Freddy's Flowers. They don't look very exciting right now because I haven't actually prepared them yet. But you get some instructions with Freddy's Flowers on how to make them look beautiful. Some tips on styling. Once again, a little reminder, I have got a 50% off code for these. So I'm gonna arrange these and then start making dinner. deliveries. This is actually something which Charlie ordered for me while we were away. It is a book called Eat What You Grow and given what I've just gone through down in the vegetable garden I think this will be really really interesting. Ah! Rosemary and sage. Pepper trees, raspberry. So I'm gonna have a really nice little look through this this evening when I sit down. And then we also had a lovely delivery from Mirabeau while we were away. This is Wow, this is a limited first edition of the La Reserve, their new rosé. Oh, how gorgeous is this? Oh my goodness. It is rather special to have a first edition of any wine. Basically means it's come from their first batch that they've produced. That is very special indeed. So that is, wow, what a beautiful bottle for their new rosé. And we have got some lovely dried blooms in here as well. What a gorgeous gift box. Thank you, Mirabeau. What is my little boy howling at? Good morning, my darlings. It is now the next day again. It appears that I've not got my vlogging mojo back after holidays and I'm still very much just picking up the camera for a couple of hours for a couple of minutes each day, which is not ideal, but I'm gonna try and be a little bit better today. It's um, it's sunny, but it's windy today, so I'm actually just gonna scrape my hair up. It's a little bit fluffy at the moment. Gosh, look, <laughs> I tried to hide the mess behind me, but this is basically my like toiletries from holiday. Is there anything more boring than unpacking your toiletries? I don't think so, so I'm very much putting that off, but um, yeah, I basically did my first post-Ibiza, post-Croquetas uh, Peloton this morning. I just did a really nice pop ride, it was 20 minutes, and I managed to beat my personal best, which is quite um, astounding considering how much I've eaten over the last 10 days and how I really just... I didn't really feel like doing a workout today, but I thought I need to get need to get back on the bandwagon, get my body moving. Um, so yeah, I had a nice shower, had a really nice pamper actually, but 
my hair's still a little bit damp, but I'm not going to bother doing anything with it because, as I said, it is blusterous outside and so I'm just going to tie my hair in a little bun because, yeah, I need to do some serious vegetable patch. My gosh, I forgot what I call it, my kitchen garden. I need to do some serious kitchen and garden maintenance today. My broad beans need to come down. Um, oh, just like I showed you earlier in the vlog, it's very overgrown. So I'm gonna get changed into something a little bit more practical. I've just been filming a reel, um, which is why I'm wearing a cute little dress. But yeah, ooh, I have something really lovely to show you actually before I go and do some gardening. You may be thinking, Josie, we have already seen your case, and yeah, we know you're obsessed with it. Well, no, darlings, this is a new one. This is um, the stowaway size of the, what is the name of the collection? Oh, I'm gonna have to leave a link down below. Um, it's got a nice name, which I can't remember. This is basically bigger than... So here's my existing one. You can see here the size difference of my existing one, which I used as my hand luggage for Ibiza, and I use it so, so much. When I first got it, I'll just pop you back up there while we chat. Um, yeah, so basically, I use my original so, so much. I still remember where I was when I bought this. I bought it from my phone in the car as we were about to embark on our road trip around France about four or five years ago. And I just thought this trip would be so cute if I had a really nice little um, handheld, what would you call it, like a vintage, vintage effect suitcase. I mean, it's got like these buckles, it's got the briefcase style opening, the straps. And I think I'd seen these on Pinterest not even Instagram and it was a lot of money and it was an investment for a suitcase but I thought I'm never going to put it in an aeroplane's hold, I'm going to keep it with me because I don't want it to get damaged, sorry the light is absolutely crazy today um, and yeah I decided to treat myself and it's something that I have never once regret making that investment because I just love it so much, I use it for props in videos and photos You'll have seen it on my Instagram, in my YouTube videos, on my blog, so many times. Most recently in the reel, I'll pop on the screen here if I can, that I shot as my kind of transition from the UK to Ibiza. Well, Steamline Luggage, that is the brand that make this, saw that reel and emailed me saying, would I like to add to my collection? So I said, yes I would, yes I very much would. And I thought, sometimes, <laughs> Well, as we've established, I'm not very good at packing light. And I feel that with COVID times, I think there's gonna be a lot more UK staycations. So no need to stress about putting things in an airplane hold. And for some trips, basically if it's more than one night, this is potentially not quite going to be enough. So I chose the next size up. Now I'm pretty sure this is called the stowaway. So yes, you could put it in the airplane hold if you wanted to. And this one actually, came, and this was, yes, very kindly gifted by the brand, which is so, so, so generous of them. It came with this, which I'm not gonna get it out, but I think this is a case, like a plastic cover for the suitcase. So if you are gonna put it in the hold of an airplane, you can protect it, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, slightly bigger, definitely room enough for if I was to do, I would say a two to five, two to four, two, two to three night stay, this would definitely be big enough. Um, they do also do hat boxes, which you can slot on top. I would say if I'm doing a four or five night stay, I might need the hat box as well as like a vanity case. But I'm gonna pop this on my poof and I will show you it in a little more detail. I mean, they really are just the most beautiful cases. So, so something that I noticed is that the leather on my old one, my existing one, is a lot more bendy. I think it definitely just softens with time. This is quite rigid. But other than that, it's identical. And also bear in mind, I've had this one for four or five years. It's been in overhead compartments. It's been in boots of many cars. It has been chucked around and the only mark on it is this little scratch here, which really doesn't bother me that much. 
I prefer to use my suitcases and get them having a few signs of wear than just to stow them away and never use them. But yeah, so this is the larger one. If we take a little look inside, so my existing one has like a net compartment down here, whereas this one is a little bit more substantial. Good for iPads or some little bits of clothing, bits and bobs to go in there. I can't remember if my smaller one came with one of these, but this one comes with this little organizer, so you could clip this up inside a wardrobe when you've got somewhere. To be honest, I don't usually use things like that. Um, ah, no, do you know what it's for? It's for when you put your clothes in and then I think you clip it on here. Yeah, that's what you're meant to do. That's what you're meant to do. Okay, that is actually quite a good idea. Ah, and it's elastic, right. I stand corrected in my orthopedic shoes. <laughs> so yeah, that's like a top cover. So if you wanted to put um, anything else on top, laptops, shoes even, and not have your shoes touching your clothes, that's actually very practical and you can pop your toiletries and things in there. I don't think my existing one has this lovely um, detail on it. Let's have a look. No, they've upgraded it. So my existing one has a leather section. See what I mean? It's got the, the netting down there. So that is the difference between the two. I feel very snazzy with the world's most beautiful luggage collection, so thank you so much to Steamline. I'm very, very, very grateful, um, and I hope to add to my collection as time goes on, because oh, it's just so spectacularly beautiful. It is incredibly blusterous, so you may not be able to hear me over the wind, but Lilla is over there starting to prune down some of the broad beans. We've got a few little last-minute harvests. Yikes, it's so windy. And I can spot some ginormous carrots in here. So I'm going to do a little bit of harvesting and then a little bit of tidying. the two little boys we have managed to clear the broad beans and Lala is now clearing the peas they've all gone over luckily we harvested most of them before we went away I've managed to pull up quite a few carrots and honestly everything that grows in this garden grows as though it is has got superpowers this is one carrot but it has wow that looks exceptionally rude can't quite tell if that's a buttocks or bazumas I'm not sure or even a tagine. who knows, it is a very rude carrot indeed. Wowza, so many nobules, I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, these definitely wouldn't make Waitrose finest. And then we've got lots more broad beans, some really big ones. Um, a few more peas down here as well. And I'm not sure if you'll remember, but just before we went to Ibiza, I planted some seeds, some autumn growing seeds. So this is my giant spinach starting to shoot through here some chicory, um, pak choy as well over there starting to germinate. My kale is doing very very well, I think I showed you this yesterday. Um, quite tempted to lift the lid off but also not tempted because I know it'll just get completely eaten alive by butterflies and pigeons. So maybe I'll just harvest a few of these and we can have some with our breakfast tomorrow.
Well, it's now a few very blusterous but sunny hours later and we have done a lot of tidying down here. It's still looking very, very wild, but that is just the theme of our garden. I think our soil is just ultra fertile because everything just grows like crazy. But let me give you a little update as to what we've done. Again, apologies for the wind noise. It is so blusterous today. So in this central bed, this has had the biggest makeover, the massive broad beans that were very much over and terribly windswept are now gone. We've hand raked over the soil and Lala has put in uh, the cucumber that I was growing in the greenhouse. And also down here, we made some chicanes for the tomatoes and the yellow pear tomatoes in the two little wigwams. Um, we're also watering the chilies and the aubergine down here. I need to do a bit of research tonight as to whether they can go outside, but to be honest, I think they'll be fine. Uh, the beetroot and the spring onion is still in situ. I've trimmed back the spinach a little bit. Uh, what else? So I pulled out loads of runner beans from this area over here. Did a lot of de-weeding on the pathways. Lala is currently cutting back the thyme. The sage has also gone a little bit wild. And let me show you what we found over in the courgette area. It's very rude, so prepare yourself if you don't like rude things. I've also been clearing the pathways. We get so many weeds growing down our pathways. Right, are you ready for this? Dun, dun, dun! Oh my goodness, is it a marrow? Is it, gosh, I'm actually getting rained on here with a sprinkler. Um, yeah, so I think it's, I think it's a trombone courgette, but as with everything in this garden, it is just literally, I mean, it looks like it's taking some kind of growth hormone, but there we go. Yeah, I think it's a trombone, but maybe one of you can correct me if that's not right. Here are some of its younger siblings. Um, I mean, they look quite trombone-like to me. We shall see. Lilla harvested quite a few courgettes while we are away, but it looks like we've got another round coming through. What else have I done? Cut down some of the goldenrod because as you can see it's just flopped down in the wind. I've done quite a lot of deadheading of the cosmos. Some of these cosmos are as tall as I am. They're <laughs> absolute monsters. I also picked some to bring inside for flower arranging. Um, over here you can probably spot a couple down here. Little strawberries. We picked a couple of strawberries. I've taken the bamboo supports and the rest of the peas out of that tub because they were all just about finished. There are still so many French beans in here. It's like a treasure hunt to try and find some. And um, Lala suggested you slice them thinly and put them in some scrambled eggs. But if you have any nice runner bean recipes, please let me know. I'll definitely be trying them in a risotto as well. Yum. I cut some of the flowers down from the sweet peas to tidy that up a little bit. There's still quite a lot growing in there, but I just can't be bothered to cut any more down. Um, and then we have got another very fast growing, is this a courgette? I think this is a courgette down here. Again, all of my seeds germinated and it seemed such a shame not to plant them, so better think of some more courgette recipes. The only thing that I'm a little bit disappointed with is my broccoli. As you can see, there is absolutely tons of it, of the plant rather, but no actual broccoli flowers, nothing that I can actually eat. Ooh, that's got caterpillars growing on it. Well, we definitely know the culprit then. It is most definitely butterflies and caterpillars that's eating my broccoli. I mean, look, there probably was an attempt of some broccoli flowers here. Oh dear, maybe next year. While mummy and granny were busy doing the gardening, somebody was busy rolling in fox poo. Luckily, we've got some new Digby dog wash from Bramley, so it won't be long until you're smelling wonderful, my stinky sausage. Rolling in fox poo. 
I don't think there is any better feeling after a few hours of intense gardening than a cup of tea and a slice of cake. This is the coffee, banana and walnut cake from Quince and Clover, which I'm going to enjoy while watching a little bit of last night's Love Island. Feeling very much refueled after my cup of tea and a slice of cake. Sorry? Uh, yeah, if you've got it there handy. And I have just seen on Instagram that the farm across the field from us have launched their sunflower field today. I've been keeping an eye on them growing, but apparently lots of them are in bloom and it's just such a lovely evening. It's still very blusterous, but um, I think we're going to just trug across the field and check them out. I might come back in a couple of days in a nice outfit to take some pictures, but for now we're just going to go and do the pick your own. I think last year it was £5 for a bunch, I think. Not too sure, but we're gonna go and check it out and I shall report back. I think so. Well the wind has calmed down a little bit and you can see over here this is the massive absolutely ginormous I think they've actually doubled it in size from last year I don't know if it'll be quite as as deep that just looks like a postcard with the clouds doesn't it? I think um, this area here is pumpkins they won't obviously be fully grown yet, but let's go and check it out. What have you found, stinker? <laughs> so here we go, similar setup to last year. They've actually got a little caravan here doing coffee during the day. Five pounds for six stems, amazing. Let's see the rules. Remember to socially distance. This is a working farm, cards accepted. Gosh, that's good. Wear suitable footwear. I have got on my Le Chameau wellies. Dickie, what footwear do you have on? A teaspoon of sugar in the glass. Oh. Please don't walk on the pumpkin patch. Let's see how their pumpkins are doing compared to ours. Be aware of our buzzy friends. Cute. So this is going to be their pumpkin patch. We can see some little tiny babies starting to come through here. Very exciting. This is going to be really cool when this is all fully grown. Gosh, this is putting my pumpkin patch to shame. I don't know if you can see here. There are some little white pumpkins. They look so fresh and juicy and young down here. And it looks like they've made it a little bit more of an adventure this year to the sunflower houses. Gosh, look at this. What a view. I think this is the best time of day to come because not only are we the only ones here, but also it's just perfect golden hour. Don't get lost, you two. fields on fields of sunflowers and they are just so beautiful I think it's very good value as well five pounds for six so if you are heading to the Cotswolds in the next I would say these are gonna look good for the next month as you might be able to see behind me there's some which are or actually rather over this way there's so many that haven't even um, turned yellow yet so there's plenty of time while these are still gonna look great so if you are heading up to the North Cotswolds anytime soon for a little UK staycation, I would definitely recommend visiting. So this is Glebe Farm Sunflowers and you can buy tickets or you can just turn up. And it's just a rather lovely way to spend an afternoon. You can bring a picnic, bring your family. We've got uh, my nephews all coming down next weekend. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna come here again. Um, and then again in autumn for the pumpkin patch. It's just really rather beautiful. And so here is our loot £10 
pounds well spent. We've got 12 sunflowers in here at the perfect stage, I would say, of picking. We could have got some slightly younger ones, but it's nice to have some in bloom and we like to support our farmer neighbors. So we'll be coming down a few times a week to top up on blooms. It's also a really lovely thing to take to people's houses if you're visiting because they're just so striking. So, gosh, listen to those animals. We put them over there so we didn't have to worry about them while we were picking. And they are the neediest animals in the world. You can see that we're here and we're not running away from you. Yes, he knows the way to your heart. Oh, I need to make sure we pay. home again after a successful sunflower mission as you can see I have popped them in a vase behind me a little tip that they wrote on the signpost was to put a teaspoon of sugar in the water so I'm gonna do that and Charlie has popped a Charlie Bigham's chicken tikka masala in the oven with some vegetable samosas so that is what we're having for our dinner and as you all know I get very sleepy after dinner so I'm gonna end the vlog here darlings thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this little sorting myself out after Ibiza, getting the house sorted, the garden sorted, a little bit of everything. But darlings, that's all from me. Wishing you a wonderful rest of your Sunday evening, a great start to the week, and I'll see you very soon for the next one. Bye.